Hallo. Eh, hjertelig velkommen til eh, denne fjerde utgaven av Silver Series. Vi eh, begynte med denne serien for akkurat et år siden, eh, og eh, det er da en mulighet til å bli kjent med internasjonal film- og videokunst, og virkelig gjøre et dypdykk i en eh, kunstners filmatiske univers. Um, mens de fleste kunstnere har gjort det enkelt for sig selv og bare sendt oss en haug med filer av sine beste verk, så har uh, Ed Atkins valgt å, å utfordre sig selv. Han har faktisk laget et helt nytt verk for Sylvie Series, hvor han har, uh, det er en, han kaller det en slags mixtape, hvor han har satt sammen uh, sentrale verk fra de siste ti årene med helt ukjente klipp, teasere, trailere, ja. Dere får snart se på det. Um, og da tror jeg rett og slett, with no further ado, I would like to warmly welcome Ed, Ed Atkins and Thank you. Anne Hilde Nesse. Thanks. Uh, and now I will switch to English. Thanks. Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Ida. Uh, so nice to see so many people here on a beautiful, sunny Oslo summer's day. Um, so just a quick introduction. Uh, Ed Atkins, artist and writer, uh, born in the UK. I read somebody somewhere outside of Oxford, or is it London? Oxford, yeah. Bo Oxford, yeah. 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 Um, and educated at St. Martin's and Slade, uh, currently working in Copenhagen, where, you're, uh, where you are, or up until very recently, visiting professor at the Royal uh, Danish Academy of Fine Arts. And uh, you've recently showed work at Venice. Uh, perhaps some of you here have uh, had the pleasure of uh, being there. Um, and solo shows include Palais de Tokyo in Paris, Stedelijk Museum in Amsterdam, Serpentine, Sackler Gallery in London, Moment PS1, uh, Martin Gropius Bau uh, in recent um, times. And your second book is about to be published by Fitzcarraldo Press later this year. Uh, and we are so honored to have you here in Oslo. Thank you It's very a real, much. real It's pleasure. It's very lovely to be here. Uh, there's an awful lot to talk about, and the film Death Mask 5, or the piece Death Mask, Fi Death Mask 5, is uh, because this series is normally um, older work yeah. um, put together, but Death Mask 5 is a kind of a new a new work somehow comprised of, mm. of, of older things. And I just wanted to maybe start off, there's a... There's a huge amount of things really we can talk about, and there's a, a lot of ideas running through this film. Um, but maybe just starting how you went about revisiting your um, previous work. I mean, you, your work is generally shown in um, installations that where they spill uh, out of the screen onto objects, drawings, um, various things, objects. Um, so it. It's a different thing just having it on a screen in a darkened room, um, yes. a single screen. So maybe something. Uh, sure. So the the a lot of the works are kind of um, they they sort of require installation, which is obviously a kind of intellectual insistence that they that they have to be seen like this. You know, uh, technically you could watch the videos on your phone or something, but um, but the, the a lot of the videos are kind of one of their base elements is is in a way that they might address a body, I suppose. Mm. And um, obviously th there are certain totally pragmatic aspects to installing work, like the loop um, and the space is, is very different. So there's never anywhere to sit, for example, which is obviously a, a, a kind of bone of contention for a lot of people. But but that I, I kind of push for that in certain ways. So that the ways in which that the videos might affect you are not they're not uh, not similar to sort of sitting in a cinema and 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 forgetting that you have a body and 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 going into this thing or whatever but they are they're much more having to deal with the return to your to yourself constantly or something that they're that, you know that whatever that rhythm is of kind of push and pull between um being sort of pulled into the work and then rejected by it in certain ways 
You're never allowed to sort of disappear into the, the yeah. comfort of the virtual Yeah, space. And, and, and in no in no way really, uh, you know, narratively or, 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 or whatever, but they're, they're also constantly telling you what they are. They're very mm. medium-specific, usually. So the, the pleasure of this uh, activity, putting together things and hunting and rifling through old bits of videos and stuff was um, kind of exquisite for me, you know, to try and try and uh, think of a cinema um, in ways that I've been not thinking about a cinema for a long time, I suppose. Mm. Or, or better said that, you know, a lot of the work is kind of um, cast at odds with cinema in certain ways, even as it kind of pilfers chunks of cinematic language and um, effect and all of this stuff, but is constantly sort of denying cinema's final kind of uh, influence in some way, whereas here is a kind of a process to embrace it and go back yeah. through old works and, and excerpt bits and then try and edit it into the shape of an hour and a half, a 90-minute long kind of... Um, sort of comfortable length. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a feature yeah. film, I yeah, suppose. Yeah. And it's, of course, not that. You know, you're going <laughs> to be watching, like, okay. chunks of things that, uh, that exist, but that they're... They're edited in such a way, I hope, that is kind of uh, warrants that length of time mm. and and feels uh, like it holds you for sufficiently and and also on the terms of cinema to a certain degree, but is constantly obviously showing you things that are um, from another place and yeah. another intention. I think um, I was quite surprised that it was so cinematic mm. in a way when I saw it because it's I mean you use uh, non-narrative structures. Um, and uh, uh, seemingly uh, incongruous uh, sequences mm. of images kind of happen uh, and so on. But I think the pairing of image and sound, not to get too sort of specific, but mm. it's incredibly, um, it's almost exploitative. It's almost like ex you, sh you seem to want to sort of exploit the, uh, the potential mm. of each um of each sound, yeah. of each uh, color, yeah. of it, of the of the surfaces, yeah. uh, and 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 that is a kind of. Um, I think we're kind of allowed to sort of luxuriate in the, in the, uh, yeah, in the visceral sort of. Yes. I don't know, in the feeling of it. Yeah. Is that where you wanted it totally. to go, or is that just somehow what? I think form for, for formally, like uh, a lot of the works, at least for a certain chunk of m me making stuff. My, my my favorite and most sort of go to structure would be a trailer in a way uh -huh. or a you know in yeah. as much as the way that they are asked to represent something bigger than themselves but also the way that they they're edited and the way that they are uh they peak uh, a kind of uh like their effect is 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 about trying to sort of get you to want this thing you mm. know there's a kind of a, a shortcut to desire but also the way that they are often use soundtracks from other things or the way that they are um, the way that they m they become a, a holistic thing that there was a period and it's probably over now but of, of trailers particularly for kind of torture porny kind of horror films where every cut would be would be attacked it would be an attack would be a literal cut you know would be sort of synonymous and, and somehow with with some violent act um, and it would ramp up into this thing and, and those those I guess those kinds of structures are are things that have been in the work for quite a while. Mm. Um, so therefore, to kind of return it to... I mean, I sort of imagine this thing a bit maybe more like... It's either a feature film or like a sizzler reel, which is supposed to peak interest and kind of uh, maintain some sort of desirous... Uh, you know, excitement yeah, about wanting something. Wanting more. When you watch it, it's definitely not that, but it's because <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of sort of nothing. But uh, at least that was the initial uh, initial drive, I suppose, was kind of like, God, would it would be great to make a kind of shit blockbuster film <laughs> out of the crap I've made, you know, but somehow sort of Frankenstein everything, suture it all together into some mm. object that sort of lumbers around like it's a Transformers film or something. Just to step back a little bit, um, you, you use, I mean, we're sort of d already deep in the sort of structure. There's a seat right there if you want. You can just walk over like that. <laughs> um, you um, use a lot of avatars mm. and they're white and they're male mm -hmm. and uh, I want to ask you about that are they representation of yourself 
of uh, are they representations of various um, psychological states? Mm. Um, I'm just curious about these um, these men. Yeah, the, the, I mean, you know, it, it's in some way they're all me, um, and I don't I don't really know how to to make anything that doesn't have that kind of direct um, thing yet. And I mean they have I'm your voice. Yeah, they're all voiced or by me, and yeah. they all have my face. So I mean, not not plastic, not cosmetically, but mm. I'm the one animating their their expressions by sort of motion capture, very crude motion capture oh stuff. Okay. So if there's a face in it, it's mine. Mm. If there's a sort of groan in there, it's my groan. You know, and if it's if it's saying stuff, so the whole thing has a very uh, a sort of quite a tight sort of. Um, Mm, masturbatory aspect to it, and as much as it's it's me, uh, or it, it less so right now, but for a long time it's me alone, talking to myself, addressing myself, unearthing stuff from myself. So necessarily as well, the kind of the 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 avatar or the surrogate that I want to test things on is things I want to test of myself in certain ways, mm. or. Mm or masochistically want to punish or want to, you know, like, it, yeah, sure. basically, it, yes, it's me, but it's not It's not that the whole thing has some sort of um, clarity, if you imagine it all autobiographically, even though maybe it does, <laughs> but it, but that it definitely is, is fully wedded to me making it mm. And, mm. And, and wanting things of it, mm. which would probably mirror wants for myself and desirousness in me, I mm. suppose, mm. yeah. Um, just uh, maybe we could m l what we're talking about uh, the film versus installation and and um, and maybe we can talk a little bit about the avatars and the sort of I mean it's all virtual so n um, and it's all a virtual space so it doesn't have a body and it doesn't have a mm. uh, you can't touch it and it's kind of uh, just talking a little bit about the sort of the digital realm. Um, and I heard you uh, maybe write or say something about uh, things like, we use things like the cloud, uh, the, the, you know, which isn't a cloud, obviously. It's, um, it's a hangar in, you know, um, Alaska with sure. full of machines. Yeah. Um, or Google, which... Yeah. Um, you know, is looks all friendly and colourful and whatever, and it's it's the same. It's yeah. uh, it's it is um, it does have a body, yeah. and it is um, it is real. Yeah. Um, uh, but we somehow spirited away by entering into this magic, objectless yes. realm. Yeah. Um, and I'm also, and I, I guess maybe that is somehow connected to the way you use language, yeah. uh, where language can be, almost become real. It's yeah. funny because I mentioned your um, your new book, mm. uh, Old Food, yeah. which uh, I got to just look at a little bit, huh. just on a PDF, so I haven't read it um, uh, uh, all that much, but I read a little bit and it almost felt like as, as if I was eating it rather than reading it. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. and, uh, and it almost felt s as sort of um, uh, y y like I felt full yeah. um, yeah. after, you know, it's incredibly rich language. <laughs> I mean, really amazing yeah. um, to read, but it's, it's sort of in <laughs> incredibly dense and rich and it's almost real. Yeah. Um, a bit like your film, yeah. uh, that your films that are they're so hyper real. And I think it's weird that the, the it's not necessarily the subject matter that is real, but the the sense of language is real, or mm. is is real in a, in a way that is not. I, I don't mean to say that I succeed in doing this, but at least part of the intent of a kind of um, uh, you know that language sort of lands in in a, in a way that is a bit perverse to the apparent point of language being just a thing that conveys meaning, I suppose, or, or communicates full stop, you know, or is transparent in that way. These are not new ideas, I'm not, uh, but, but the, 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 at least in the videos, I mean, it's, it's worth saying that there's, there's quite a lot of the stuff in this thing, which is pre-me pre using CGI exclusively, mm -hmm. which I think was, was interesting for me to revisit because I think there's a lot of stuff that's already starting there in terms of a kind of a, uh, medium specificity of addressing. And, and in a way that the point of 
my use of CGI was always that, was to kind of, um, what, was a, what was a medium that could have a lot of the kind of um, effective um, reach of, say, uh, th of bits of cinema, mm. but also this sort of re totally um, resistant obstacle of constantly being reminded of its medium, of, mm. the, of the medium and, and what its limitations are mm. by both asking it to do things that it can't do or I can't do with it, rather, that's better better put, but also that, it, that in recognizing its limits that you're kind of left in this sort of awkward space between um, being, because it, uh, often it's, sorry, I'm really drifting away from what, you're, what you were asking, I think, but the, the, the work is often fundamentally just an attempt to pull you in while rejecting you at the same time. Yeah. And that the, the terms of the pulling in are, are kind of um, mm. Mm, uh, not physical and the ones that are, are physical. But then exactly this thing of what do you do with a medium which is constantly trying to disappear and to... Um, and and then that disappearance is, is obviously inculcated in a lot of other stuff. You know, it's not it's not just as simple as like great. There's no, you know, it's just stuff, or whatever. Or it's just nothing. Mm. But that actually, that like you said, that it's there's a kind of um, mm, adjournment of material, but it's just to somewhere else. Mm. But that obviously there's a lot of the language around this stuff is uh, is is complicit in the act of hiding and losing the medium and the physical and the and the bodies and the labors and all of the all of the other stuff that is yeah, that is yeah. rampant but also uh, uh, hidden behind a facade of um, uh slick iPhone, yeah. which is yeah, yeah, you yeah. know you children's know. Uh, yes, work the sort of Asimov uh, uh, magic and ignorance stuff. Yeah. You know, the sort of um, yeah. so so how to retrieve the medium in a way that is uh, I can't I clearly can't bring a server farm into the space but what what I can do I hope is to sort of point out that queasy sensation of recognizing that this thing is this is this terrible facade which is almost heretical in its attempts to represent certain kinds of empathic performance and whatever mm. um, but is is terribly failing at that job in mm. as much as we can uh, we can always and totally recognize that it's f fake and yet trying to not be or something. Yeah, yeah. It's burbling, sorry. But at the same time, it's almost like you're, um, it's almost like it's a sort of uh, uh, exudes kind of these material qualities. Yeah. But it's from the immaterial. But I think that that's... Uh, and, it, and it's yeah. a very sort of the, the thingness and the mm. sort of objects, and that's just uh, maybe I'm not being very articulate in, answer in asking it because it's, um, it's kind of hard to articulate, but it's the difference between the real and the, and the, and the virtual yeah. and somehow how they bleed in and out of each other in, in your work. But that that's, I think that's, that's I suppose, a kind of uh, uncanny. You know, yes. That would be part of the... the, the, the whatever the big legacy of that term is in some way. Making, uh, what's the de short definition? Making the familiar uncomfortable, is it? Or the, this, uh, it's yeah. one of those untranslatable German things, I think. Unheimlich. Unheimlich. Yes, yeah, yeah. uncanny. But, uh, There's but the uncanny valley, yeah. which we probably, uh, I don't know if, um, but that's a, a level of discomfort. Uh, the closer an object uh, or an animated object become to a human, right? Yeah. So you be feel less and less comfortable the more something looks like a yes. human being. Um, but that that's that's it's interesting that that is predominantly a kind of uh, visual it measurement, right? It's about sort Absolutely. of seeing a face or something yeah, yeah. rather than uh, something performing. Say like th things we're much more familiar with about sentimentality or something, things that fake sincere sincerity or or, or sentiment mm. in certain ways, mm. and the sensation of being manipulated but succumbing, or the sensation of a kind, you know, whatever those relations are within within some expanded idea of uncanniness, mm. that it, it 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 would obviously extend into um, uh, emotion in some way or or. Yeah, but, but also, you know, like the use of music in a lot of this stuff is 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 really plugging hard into kind of um, sentimentality in some ways. And mm. like, here's the thing that that 
Like the, there's a um, one of the videos which is not really part of this, but although there's a, a clip of it with using the bolero. You know, Ravel's bolero is so insanely it's overused incredible as uh, to be piece. Uh, thank yeah. you, but it, but it's so. Um, you know what happens. Wh you know a, a work like that, which was sort of lunatic in its day, yeah. um, is now so ubiquitous as to be spent and sort of you know yeah. a husk of music in some way so maybe uh yeah you should all watch out for the scene because it's a sort of a bruised i don't is it um, part of safe, safe conduct, conduct. Yes. It's, a, it's a trailer of for safe conduct for safe this, okay this so there's a, a bruised avatar ripping off his face again and again and he sort of uh, yeah he sort of nonchalantly um hums bolero do, 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 do. You know, in a kind of very sort of happy, but then he's <laughs> pulling off his face again, and again, and then, and this is incredibly very real, very sort of hyper real um, image of a sausage factory. Yeah, that's just from uh, how things are made, uh, whatever that program's called, how oh it's made. I see, okay, discovery. Because then, not then CG. <laughs> and then you get the. Uh, <laughs> No, but it, so it was so there, there you go. So it's uh, and uh, and the you know the music kicks in in full yeah, yeah, force, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's almost like these sausages are sort of dangling, almost yeah. like a sort of a. But that Elizabethan piece of music is a, is a machine, you know. That's <laughs> that that Ravel called it a machine for orchestra. You yeah, know, that this yeah. is a thing you could just press go on an orchestra, and they play this, and they play it's it. A demo button. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an extraordinary. Um, moment mm. uh, uh while we're on on little segments i, I wanted to ask you about the um, the, the sandwiches uh, towards the end because uh, they were also uh, shown in venice and i guess in walter uh, in the gropius uh, bow uh, yeah, old food there, oh they weren't okay I d they didn't make the cut there okay and at these um Sandwiches where pieces of bread uh, are containing babies and books and faces and as as well as lettuce and and ham, yeah. uh, uh <laughs> and again it's it's sort of uh, super real somehow. It's uh, um, if it, it sounds very uh, intensely real. <laughs> it's very. <laughs> but it's obviously, it's obviously yeah, yeah, animation. Yeah. 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 I don't know how how did she come up but with I that. Think it's, the, it's interesting <laughs> the kind of locus of what what r real feels like in certain things, and mm. and I think increasingly it's it's become about foley. It's become about yeah. sound effects. So if you watch that thing with no sound, it's sort yeah. of weightless nothing. But mm. you you suddenly sort of add this l layer of of sound. It, it, it yeah it becomes materially. Uh, and it's fascinating, and you know, like I this. I wanted to ask you about the sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, because I was wondering if it's Foley, if it's real sound that you've put on there, or if it's I mean, it's a mix of, like, just stuff. archive of yeah. sound effects and stuff, but it's but it's very, um, I mean, it's obviously stupidly gratuitous, <laughs> like as if the whole thing is contact mic'd or something. But but that, that that's a kind of, it's fascinating sort of thinking about the, the way that a body uh, hears, you know, that that is a, a thing that makes your actual body vibrate because mm. of its you know, so it's it's already this material sort of literal process whereas at the same time it, it, it's also th the way in which you lend weight to anything i think is that's why foley even exists mm. as a as a as a medium is that it's the effect of of a um a sufficiently or rather gratuitously meaty left hook or something is kind of it it lands as a as too much, but yeah. it also registers as a kind of as as violence in that way, you know. Yeah. Um, but the sandwiches are were were just a. Dis I suppose that I I started being a bit sort of dumb, but in uh, thinking of sandwiches as metaphors or something, or just a sandwich. Metaphors. Just, I don't know really what for, but just like just you know, right sandwich metaphor. And uh, <laughs> I'll just think you know like the parenthesis of the bread and mm. and then this stuff in between. There's the there's the. There's a corporate notion of a shit sandwich, yeah. which is basically <laughs> yeah. when you give um, sort of a uh, soft uh, chat and then and then the criticism and then the soft right. softness. So it's like a shit sandwich. It's oh. like a, it's like the shit inside. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the criticism yeah. that you're trying to hide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or somehow, that's that's yes, a term. That's awful. But yeah. um, I'm j I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> But no, but it's 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 true. I mean, <gasps> there's kind of um, uh, you know, in the in at least the clips of the video, it sort of follows the edit of a pretty much exactly of a Burger King advert from about 1996 or something, of like 
dropping in it. And then there's a point I where the that. sandwich is assembled and then it sort of fans out and you can see yeah. all the layers. Where usually there might be sort yeah. of little call out things that would say, I don't know, lettuce, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever, yeah. tomatoes. But th but that it but that the yes. things that are landing in it are just obviously arbitrarily ingredients to a thing. You know that the mm. the idea of forcible kind of conjoining of these things inside of his. I think um, I, I don't quite know how to talk about that piece, but uh, except for except for it's it's sort of the way that the the surprise of the things that drop on it. The, the the idea that you can basically it's a sort of exercise in CGI as well in as much as you can do anything right mm, mm. so everything becomes about choice you just mm. so what are you going to choose to do with that mm. thing and then, then that's the most exorbitant thing it's like I want to see this why do I want to see that you know why don't I want to see uh, the Incredible Hulk <laughs> or what or the camera spinning around why do I just want to see that or some or, or what you know, I suppose that th that would be a sort of byproduct of medium specificity, in as much mm. as the understanding that CGI, as a thing that we, even if we're familiar with that acronym, is is attached to computer generated compu image. Yeah, and yeah, thanks. Uh, um, com attached to uh, a particular kind of aesthetic, I suppose, mm -hmm. which is not necessarily true, but uh, yeah. I don't know. But it looks like it's really kind of hard work, though. You say that, oh, I can do any, you know, you can... But it it's I had a lot of help with that one. It's uh, the, it you know. feels like yeah. this is, you know, I know you're not Pixar Studios or whatever, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's so it's like it's... Well, you can buy all the models, right? That's right. A good, it's a good start. It's if anyone's interested in getting started, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you just go to Turbo Squid. How and do you, you can start making one of those? Oh, but, but you just... Uh, the thing is, I think what's interesting is putting this together is realising... Uh, how I only know so much and I never go above it. <laughs> There's a kind of limit. And then, uh, I, but that, that controls my desire for it as well. It's fascinating, the kind of relationship of like, so if you could see anything, what would you choose? And then why mm. would you choose that? And what do you, it would be like the idea that a painter could paint anything at all, but always with the kind of caveat that it, it would, it would, it would still look like a shit painting or something that it's sort of like everything is is always this compromise of like okay i, I you go on turbosquid.com where you can buy models of anything at all mm. and you would say i want uh, a, a white male that one that's the only one okay there's only two and that one's the most rigged sufficiently so i can animate it that one so you just have that so there's a kind of uh pragmatism about it is that all of these things still exist it's not like i'm blowing glass i'll just buy a glass you know what i mean mm. it's closer mm. to that than it, like even though the idea of gen entirely generating something from the ground up it's not really true mm. at least for me mm. if you're pixar of course you can you make your own glass it'd be weird if they bought them on turbo squid you know maybe they do <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that'd be amazing i don't know where i'm going with this <laughs> thing, isn't it? it's fascinating because it's it's just one of those things that run through your mind when you watch <laughs> this. <laughs> and it's like, I'm going to talk to the man who made those sandwiches today and uh, <laughs> where do I start, you know? <laughs> uh, because it's like, how, how do you get there somehow? I think it's, it's, there's it's often um, a kind of perverse... I mean, it, uh, it's almost all of it just is fundamentally per yeah. perversion and wanting to see things that are against or other than th what one might expect to see. I mean, mm. it, it's not mm. a new thing at all, but, I, but the, the thing with the... With food and CG was just mm. that seems a weird marriage. Mm. I'd like to feel that mm. sensation mm. of what food is in, in as much as sustenance. And obviously, that you start to barrel into a lot of sort of conceptual oh, interest around uh, <laughs> around sustenance or or or, or taste or or, or the, you know just pushing these cultures together in certain ways does mm. something. And food writing is an interesting yeah. um, chapter as well. I mean, how do you describe tastes? How do you... And in a way, it's a similar thing to music writing, mm. which is also a... It lends to an, an awful lot of uh, metaphors and and you're dragging in all sorts of things that are unrelated to, uh, I love uh, that. to the I mean, sound. Exactly. Um, the cliches of, uh, of, of, of music and film criticism of like, it's like... X with this, but uh, you know, like the, the yeah. kind of 
the reach of like trying to describe something, which you know, like a lot of all of the work really is sort of uh, at least partially founded on uh, on representations being insufficient in some way, or mm. they're not the thing, right? So, so why not ask them to represent things that are that are already impossible to represent. Mm, mm. And that, that was definitely part of the initial turn of trying to make videos and stuff was like asking it to do things or to conjure things that were lost entirely and uh, irrecuperably so. Mm. Like people, but also like feelings or memories, you know, that things, the idea of sufficiently uh, uh, representing something that is that is entirely wedded to experience and it's, I mean, just the complexity of that kind of as an idea even is is remarkable, I think. But also the 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 desire to nevertheless kind of somehow try and approach that limit in mm. some way. You mm. know. Maybe we should. Um, uh, I mean, the the idea of, of of reading something and feeling that you've eaten it, um, or what watching something <laughs> and feeling that you might have ate it. Um, I mean, uh, in your in your previous books, which is a collection of texts, the primer for cadavers, uh, which is also the same publisher, Fitzcarraldo yeah. Press, which is yeah. an excellent uh, publisher. Um, you sort of use the death, death mask as a motif, um, yeah. uh, but it also includes this text, A Tumor, which is from 2010. Yes. Um, There's a bit of the film in this, in this one. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And I remember being very spooked um, when I saw that in London at huh. Tate Britain, I think yeah. it was, yeah. Uh, it was probably around that time. Um, and it, it, it sort of uh, begins with a character telling another that reading this text will conjure a tumor inside of you. And it contained, a little, there was also a booklet. And I just couldn't read it mm. because you start feeling that, what if he's right? What if these words and it will does. actually it works. make me cancerous? It totally and yeah. it's you freak out, and it's so because reading <laughs> is such a private moment. You know, you're there, you're in your own head with text. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, you know, it's m something for me only, right? Yeah. Like this text, yeah. and and it just felt so spooky. Yeah. And uh, in in a way, I'm I'm just re interested in this idea of. I don't know if it's sort of you conjuring uh, some kind of magic or this is the, this sort of idea of ghost, uh, some weird Victorian Gothic idea of, uh, of um, magic going into objects mm. or um, I don't know if you can, uh, it's not a very well articulated no, question no, no, but no. and I don't know quite how to phrase it but... Um, I think the spell, is that the your spell sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah, it's a and spell. And all that sort of, I mean uh, 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 well, just like, like uh, th I think it's like a Alistair Crowley thing. Is like, uh, yeah, um, magic is a disease of language or something. Which I, you know, which Burroughs obviously absolutely. took. Yeah, yeah. Of, of language is a virus and completely. Um, yeah, and and so what? But but to treat that kind of more literally than it's kind of, um, you know. It's common understanding, as at least at least we're talking figuratively here. Mm -hmm. But that no, no, maybe it, it is, you know. And also, I think I think it's a long time ago, but I think the tumor thing was very much about, which obviously it still does. If you read it, it will give you a tumor. But the the idea that uh, trying to uh, promise the conjuring of a real material thing that is sort of very hard to find and prove has happened, <laughs> you know, <laughs> some secreted thing. Also, obviously, born out of uh, a dead dad who died of cancer. So there's a, you know there's a whole other reason for doing it. Mm. But the 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 kind of attachment to needing the language to have pro made a material promise or, or to be actively changing material reality in some way. In the same way important. that you might feel full when you read old food. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. The the the, the just. Um, also, I think just deep in me is a love of language as a thing, as a particularly oral, orally performed, you know, like that speech and recitation and magic words and um, all of those things that can, that genuinely, of course, they do 
observably have material changes on the world. What people say makes material difference. Mm. But uh, obviously, like what you said about the intimacy of reading something, and when there's the second person address of you in the in in a book, it's only you, isn't it? You know that that's that's there with it. So um, breaking that fourth wall, I suppose, in 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 literature, which isn't again, is a very sort of common trope, but that it's that it's also a kind of um, yeah, it's it's uh, a, a way to intimate itself, the mm. work, and the, the or a, animate. a lot of yeah, <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of yeah. presumption of that as an ideal within all of the video work as well. Of like, I'm going to get too close to you and try and say this or mm. something, or try and present a feeling. I mean, it's very seldom, um, you know, the text sort of sits apart, and there's, there's uh, in the selection I've made, there's not so much speaking. There's a bit. And it's definitely something I've separated more. That the the work I wanted to speak less in okay. words. I think, not entirely sure why, but um, wanting to. You have lots of different characters, though. Yeah. Um, th who speak? Um, yeah. Well, there, I mean, th but then again, that that. And some voices that aren't yours in the in the. Yeah, they're just field. I mean, field recordings. They're just like people I know. Yeah. I mean, just doing like lectures or yeah or just something. I think there's bits of uh, my mum petting a dog um, mm. there's bits of there's a lot of like uh, uh, eruptive kind of language uh, you know like this or, or rather not eruptive but yes eruptive but also the kind of stuff that you say between the the processing noises. I was just trying to do one. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, you know, like that kind of thing. Or just um, the, 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 the meter of spoken language as a kind of um, constant callback of the body. Mm. Or like burps and farts and things, I suppose. That's, that's totally the register that I'm operating it on. It says <laughs> um, one, of, one, of the, uh, the one of the things that... I just uh, noted down as I was uh, as watching it a thimble of stomach, a thimble of stomach acid unexpected in a burp. Yes, <laughs> and just little things like this that are just so somehow uh, that gives so much as, uh, association and and that y they are familiar and unfamiliar at the same time. Yes, um, but somehow putting well, it's words about to maybe something. being very familiar with something, but not necessarily being entirely familiar with someone addressing you about it or yeah. talking about yeah. it or even publicly yeah but uh, again maybe probably Who less describes so, no? burps you know it's like yeah, it's me <laughs> plenty <laughs> i think but i think uh, yeah uh, that's part of a uh, a piece in the middle which is actually called the primer for cadavers which is mm. an old like 2011 i think or 2010 mm. Mm. and that there's a kind of list of things that it might be recalled produce. by mm. or produce or, or yeah I mean, um, going back to the sort of the power of, of language and the, uh, and the, um, the sort of slight mystical nature of objects, I mean, we are also now in a, in a place where uh, a lot of objects are so-called intelligent, right? We have Alexa and we have fridges, I think, who can order milk, and um, or at least I've read that that. <laughs> yeah. exists somewhere uh, phones obviously recording us all the time probably um, that uh, these sort of objects are, in uh, are endowed with a lot more power mm. somehow um, and I think in your film in your films that the, the objects have a lot of power yeah. somehow they're endowed with well in as much as if, the, if, the, if one is to pursue the kind of medium specific kind of symptom which is that you're constantly aware that everything you're seeing is a is an object and not a person or something mm. th if, th if th there is a delineation there i don't know but but that yeah all of these models that you can buy and the kind of uh, treatment of them as objects but also they're kind of that their objecthood is something that they're potentially railing against in certain ways. Mm. I'm speaking specifically of the, the figures, mm. which I still don't know really know what to call because I sort of hate Avatar, but I also... Model? Uh, model, yeah. I quite liked surrogate for a while because of what Surrogates. I was pushing them, th putting them through, but that seems to bring a, a massive 
uh, it's impossible to. Anyway, the things that I, li I like to do things to. Mm. <laughs> mm. But that, that <laughs> again, that like kind to of put there's them some through various yeah. Yeah. angsts and uh, sadnesses and emotional turmoil. And there was a, there's a text panel that was in old food in in Venice and various places, which actually was yes. written, written by contemporary art writing daily, who are an anonymous yeah, group what of people that write a blog where they, generally speaking, just write critical chunks about shows that are being represented on contemporary art daily. All of this sounds really fucking boring or awful or something or pretentious, but they're extraordinary writers. And I've worked with them a few times and, and they wrote all the wall text panels, mm. which were all sort of c burnt into bits of wood in and stuff. Yeah, and kind of a very old, Yeah, could be found. Overly material kind mm. of uh, stuff. And one of the, the this idea of that the figures are kind of, or that these are emotional crash test dummies. And they go into this great sort of thing about, uh, yeah, crash test dummy, the evolution of the crash test dummy, which, you know, at some point someone throwing like a pig carcass down an elevator shaft to see what happens to a dead body when it lands there. So all of this stuff gleaned from various online. Is that something you've researched? The, the how you how they yeah use, yeah well wow. yeah or just whatever, but mm. just just the sort of e e extension of like what do you do when you want to do something to a thing, you don't want the real thing, and you want to hold on to the artifice of the fake thing, but you want people to feel that there is the threat of the. You know, yeah. blah blah blah. Sort of <laughs> slightly <laughs> ludicrous kind of uh, situation of attachments and and consequences mm. and things, mm. but yeah, that 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 the, the, these essentially the videos. Um, if one were to sort of, which is not right. If I were to think of them not therapeutically, because it's certainly not necessarily positive. I mean, there's a good chance that all these films are evil, but. Uh, they might not be good for you, is what I mean. You know, there's not there's not some prerogative here to present work that is that will make you better, or that art is good for you at all, or anything like that. But the the the, the things that the the making the videos make me go through in my stead, or that I can make something in, in instead of. I'm not being able to finish this thought, but it's it's um that's kind of what they are. There's a great uh, um. Mm, and I still hang on to this this tidbit from uh, 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 an old friend called Ian White, who said that uh, he thought that all the videos were dead men, and, and that there's a very productive way. All the all the, videos the videos were just were dead dead men, not not literally, obviously, but just like the the treatment of them. Uh, uh, if one is to approach each one of these things and think and think of it through, like in the same productive way that you could you could say, this isn't a painting, this is a sculpture. And that obviously brings a whole baggage of other kinds of critical faculty and everything to the mix. But what if you were to declare, that, okay, this is a dead man. And it was really, uh, it really, uh, it, it's, it's still a productive way to think about them for me in making stuff, um, is to make switches like that particularly that one, because there is, there, uh, particularly not so much anymore, but previously there was a, a real feeling of like, uh, uh, it as a process of uh, mourning or something, but also as a kind of the treatment of ethereal stuff and material things and this kind of sh smooshing of stuff into one holistic thing, which was, despite everything you wanted it to be, was would remain dead and was in fact born dead. That's what a, a good sort of realistic video is, I think, is that it's born dead, so it's permeated with loss straight away. Mm. So therefore has this kind of affective, uh, hopefully. And then, there's, and then there's this sort of terrible constant attempt to forcibly reanimate it. <laughs> well, you have, you have talked about absence uh, in an interview where you said something like, um, I think it was the Louisiana Channel, and uh, you said that everything you did was defined by an absence, insufficiency, an illability, failure. Something kind of missing is somehow the, the bedrock of making things. Yeah. Is that... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, is I that think still the g your sort of... Um, I think appro generally approaching the world uh, uh, negatively. Mm. I don't mean that morally or whatever. I just mean like... I know what it's not, or mm -hmm. I know I don't. I don't necessarily. I'm not a big fan of 
naming things or knowing what they are necessarily. I just know what they're not. So you start to sort of whittle away into this, and then you're left with this this space, which is still defined by its by its it not being this, mm. or it's uh, or. So yeah, you're like melancholy, so you're sad, but you're not sure why. Yeah, yeah, it's yes, exactly. sort of undefined slightly. Um. Yes, yes. Although the the process of making and stuff is 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 a kind of um, uh, attempt to find those edges in some way, mm. or, or, or I, I don't mean it necessarily about like me finding edges for me or something, but just like finding edges constantly. Mm. That that I, I suppose I, I believe that finding the edge of like what I can do with a CGI animation program is at least mildly equivalent to finding the edges of what I can do with my memory to recall the weather or sex or something. You know, like the, the limit is something that is um um that that bears equivalence and and that, that that would be how it it is figurative in some way, that it, it stands in for and mm. and pushes it to a kind of caricatured version of that in order to have any kind of manifestation of that, mm. I suppose, rather than just deal with a kind of nebulous absence that rather sort of stapling it in, mm. making it into a thing that, sure, can sure. that can't contain it, but which is trying still. Death Mask 5. Yep. Why the title? Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I... I uh, uh, I wrote a load of uh, unfilmable screenplays mm. years ago. Um, Death Mask One. Um, what was another one called? There were a few. Unfilmable yeah. screenplays. Death Mask One was uh, w uh, featured Madame Tussaud, um, Columbo, uh, Knights of the Round Table. There was a lot of uh, mm -hmm. death represent. It was sort of funny. But probably like, hey, I'm a BA student. Funny, yeah. or like sounds I like one of those. Anything. What's your dream dinner party? I mean, I think <laughs> it might be good. I'd have to go over them again and stuff. But <laughs> but then and then I made a, a short called Death Mask to the Scent, which is featured mainly a durian fruit being filmed in a slightly Framptony kind of way, but with a lot of synth over the top. Okay. And then there was Death Mask Three, which was a lot of uh, a sort of like a travelogue, but a mess of which there's a chunk in this. Death Mask Four, who knows what happened to that? Death Mask <laughs> Five. This is it's just a kind of uh, convenient <laughs> callback to something that I'd already fucked with the with the sequencing of and didn't mm. care anyway. And mm. but I but the Death Mask thing also it's a great title for a, a genre film of yeah of ill repute from whenever you know. Oh, have you seen Death Mask? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. like it exists already some yeah, somewhere exactly. as it's a, blo it's a, it's some a blockbuster. It's an exploitation kind mm. of... It's mm. attached, And actually, the, the first Death Mask, Death Mask 2, the first Death Mask, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, had a lot of this cannibal holocaust theme throughout it, which actually appears at the beginning of the thing, by Riz Ortolani. It's like this kind of mm. horribly bucolic, kind of cutie, um, M-O-R-E sort of theme. Mm soundtracking a, a, a notoriously and litigiously violent uh, uh, exploitation wow. horror film. Well, I think it's probably time to see um, see the film. If yep. any of you have a burning question, you may uh, ask It might be a, a better idea to ask them in the bar afterwards uh, once you've seen things, I suppose, maybe. I don't know. But if you do have any, sorry. Um... But uh, you're in for a ride. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank it's you been very really much. fun uh, talking to, to you. I think th there's an awful lot of things we didn't cover. We didn't go into music and we didn't go into editing, yeah. which I think is a really fascinating uh, thing that you don't necessarily notice. Mm. Um, I mean, it's a thing you don't notice when you watch films, right? Sure, but sure. It's, uh, it's a really fascinating area of... Um, and in actual fact, I don't even know if you know this, but when I first met you, huh. I ran a, a something called Electra Productions in London, yeah. and uh, Christine Markley rented um, a, a <laughs> spare um, a desk yeah. in our space, yeah. and uh, and he he came out with his sort of arm. He was he sort of almost couldn't move because he had been editing all day, <laughs> and he was making the clock, and he couldn't talk about it because it was so top secret. This was before. 
you know, this is probably a couple of years before, but you, of course, um, watched uh, films and picked um, all the clocks out, right? Yeah, I, um, I, yeah. I worked on the clock for two and a half years. Yeah, so. and I think I, I, I <laughs> saw you sort of come out it of that ruined room. all of just, cinema for a while. Just like <laughs> hardly, yeah. And yeah, it was... Uh, <laughs> um, so... Um, <laughs> That's that was in a different life, yeah. but uh, must have been kind of a, a in retrospect a fascinating a journey through movies. You think it was? I don't know if you can yeah. see what films anymore, and people sort of. I still have the database of everything that was ever watched for that, for making the clock. Wow, it's like thirty thousand oh films or something <gasps> insane. Yeah, and watch is like a really loose. T- I like I would just scrub through timelines. Yeah, yeah, looking for like clocks and sand timing things and anything that even connoted uh, yeah. time at all. Yeah. It's a monumental it piece of, uh, yeah. of work, but it must have done things to your idea around cinema. <laughs> so. Yeah. We, uh, yeah. I mean, I was tasked uh, predominantly with, with like, you can find some stuff we haven't looked at yet because they gave me the list of everything they'd already looked at, which was not that long, but was all the things I already had in my head of like, shit, that would have a great, a lot of clock stuff in it. So you'd be tasked with like, could you find stuff around sort of three thirty a.m. generally? Ah. So obviously you think horror films, surely mm. not so much. A lot of shit happens at midnight. A lot of shit, ha- you know, like there's a lot of really like uh, accurate times. And then you'd hit on pay dirt. You'd hit some film with a lot of timers in it or something. You'd be mm-hmm. like, yes, here's my <laughs> quotient for the week, you know. <gasps> but yeah, it was generally like I just I was a member of every DVD store in East London, and we just get a load of stuff, and then I'd be illegally downloading a lot of stuff, mm. and then I'd just scrub through things. It was not it was not fun, uh, but there was definitely a kind of um, th- uh, you lived for the the hit of like finding a clock. Mm, mm. You'd be really like a bit like. <laughs> Picking berries or something, <laughs> <laughs> the or Norwegian equivalent. Down, right? Like, yeah, yeah, wow, yeah. there's right. a whole load of. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, but it's like finding a berry that is a particular diameter. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, fuck. You know, how am I going to do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, a small anecdote of yeah, um, <laughs> a previous life. Anyway, thank you very much for coming, and please do enjoy Ed Atkins's um, Death Mask Five. <laughs> I think there's a. Short break, and then the movie will begin. Short break? Yeah, two two minutes or something.